While the San Jose Sharks are still struggling to find their first win, the San Jose Barracuda are a wagon. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, caretaker of the Reef, also the co-host of Western Conference Tuesdays on the Locked on NHL channel. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, proudly part of the Locked on Network, where we cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube as well. And today we're discussing the wagon that is known as the San Jose Barracuda as they have started uh, a hot, hot start to the uh, Sharks AHL affiliate. So we'll talk about how Askarov changes, just changes everything for the Barracuda. Plus why we, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the Askarov plan. Uh, talk about the offense and it's just better in numbers and why the defense just looks so much better as well. So. Before we do get to all that, I do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So, Barracuda are uh, three and one. Their one loss coming, uh, unfortunately, last weekend uh, when they pooped the bed in the final kind of five minutes of a game and blew a lead to the rain. But this Barracuda team is uh, really good. Like, and I know we have been, there's the scars of years past, but I'm here to tell you it's different this year. Uh, and one, the main reason why it's different is the goaltending. Um, Yaroslav Askarov, uh, he's good. He's very good. Um, if you haven't seen or if you're just waking up or uh, don't go on the internet, he hasn't let in a goal yet. He has two shutouts to start his season. While definitely not sustainable for him to be that type of player, uh, to just never give up a goal. He has come out and after missing training camp, and there was some worry, maybe some rust or something like that, you know, dealing with injuries and not playing in training camp. But um, he has come out and taken, he has wrestled the belt away from anybody who will be uh, on being the best goalie prospect in the NHL. Or not in the NHL, I guess. So, um, and especially this weekend, great, great matchup between Askarov and Jess Revolset uh, on you know Saturday night. The two best goalies who are not in the NHL going at it, and Askarov, Askarov was better. He he was just playing better, and then you follow up. I know Volset played that second game on Sunday, but Volset gave up seven goals in a game in two periods to be honest seven goals in two periods and the barracuda took their foot off the gas but having askarov who he just changes the math for the barracuda and hopefully eventually for the sharks because um he can just erase problems for you and he granted like the team in front of him has played very very well um the defense has been much better the offense and we'll get to these a little bit more but like the team has just been a better team in front of him so whenever there is any sort of breakdowns like he's just there to, to clean things up and um because of one how he well he reads the play and his, his athleticism he's not asked to make a lot of big time saves but when he does he's able to do so and there's you know there's the one save from saturday night where he looks dead to rights and just pops his glove up um and is able to make a save and it's you wonder too since he catches with his uh he's backwards right he's able to to, to make the save there because yeah um he's weird with his hands anyway but he he's just a game changer, and I've had people. There's there's still people t right now who are, who are mad about the Sharks trading the the Vegas pick, which is trending to be. I know it's way too early to look at Tankathon. Uh, spoiler: It's never too early to look at Tankathon. But looking at Tankathon right now, the Vegas pick is fifteenth. Okay, 
I'm taking Askarov. I th- whatever you pick at 15 isn't one probably not going to be as good as Askarov, and two isn't going to help you as quickly as Askarov. Askarov is going to be in the NHL next year as the Sharks backup, and then eventually be the starter. Uh, like Askarov's going to be playing. Like Askarov has got one more season where he's going to be in the AHL this year. And by the end of the year, he's most likely going to be in the NHL, but he it's Mike Greer's moves here. It's just paying off. And the Barracuda and Mike Greer and Joe will, they went out of their way to this season, this off season, spend some money, be competitive and want the Barracuda to be competitive. And you're seeing early returns of it being successful but the biggest move of course uh for them was getting askarov who um and this is not to say like romanov has played great well as well like i, I you know romanov he let up three goals yesterday and he you know he got the loss unfortunately against the rain um but one again the barracuda on on sunday's game they were up seven to two after two periods and basically we're just trying to skate out the last 20 minutes but um romanov has been has been great and he's felt he's dealt with a lot more shots than uh askarov has but you know i I, and i i think romanov his trajectory and like he is i wouldn't be surprised if two years from now or three years from now it's just askarov and romanov up in the NHL playing for the Sharks because I think that highly of what Romanov can do and how quickly he's progressed in such a short amount of time. Um, but again, like just Askarov, he just changes what this team can do because um, you don't have to worry about the goaltending. And when was the last time you could say that about the Barracuda? The goaltending on the Barracuda has been shaky at best over the past couple seasons with, you know, different guys in and out. And, you know, they've had some solid runs from guys and, you know, you've had flashes from E2 Makanemi and Yosef Kornosh and Aaron Dells, you know, played well here and there is, but like you actually have a future in your blue and you're in the pipeline here with the Sharks goaltending now, which is something we haven't really been able to say. And um, it's going to look a lot different next year when it's probably going to be Romanov's net and they'll have to find somebody else to, to back him up. But um, I still think though, like just having Askarov back there, it's just, it as we like, he's a very kind of chaotic and really fun, energetic, energetic player, but it also kind of calms things down because you know, like if I make a mistake, if I'm a defenseman and I pinch, or, you know, a turnover like in the neutral zone or, you know, if I make a bad play, it's he's going to just take care of it. And you don't want to continually test that. Right. And I think that's where the Barracuda have gotten better, even as the season's gone on, where you've seen the penalties kind of cut down. Um, you've seen the team play much better, uh, especially compared to kind of what they played last year, you know, even at their best last year. Like, I think what we've seen from this team so far this year. Um, they've been just playing much cleaner hockey. That's also, I think, because you have a lot more veterans on this team, but just having a guy like Askarov who's back there and just can erase, just erase your mistakes and erase your problems uh, for you. And um, I think it's, it's huge. And now you combine that with the way the Barracuda's offense has been playing, which has been very good. And the just, better depth and better contributions from the blue line. Um, You can see why this team has been very good and gotten off to a hot start and why they should be favorites to make the playoffs and, you know, potentially now win the Pacific, uh, which is something I never thought I would say about this Barracuda team, but um, they are, yeah, this, this team, this team is a wagon and, the crazy thing is we've we've gotten splits between Askarov. Like he hasn't even really gotten that. He's gotten the same amount of starts as Romanov. We'll see now with the Barracuda. They have this week. They have a uh, little bit. So they play Wednesday, um, Friday. Like Askarov should get both those starts, and then they're off again until the following Wednesday. Like we should potentially get a nice Askarov run here, um, as 
they want Askarov to, you know, get the bulk of the starts here and uh, continue his development and getting ready for to be an NHL goalie. So wouldn't be surprised if we get a really nice run of Askarov starts here. I, I would expect two out of a minimum two out of three, if not three of the next uh, Barracuda starts for Askarov, especially with the time off in between. So uh, we'll dig into the offense and how this has changed for the Barracuda uh, and why there's room for potential improvement here at some point. Uh, so we'll, we'll start talking about the offense and uh, here in just one second. Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season off with a big return on Fandle, America's number one sports book. So we get a hunch in the middle of the game. You can check out the latest stats, view live play by play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Now that two is back, uh, yeah, I think the Dolphins the Dolphins are in a desperate mode. They need to start winning games. I think Tua comes in as a big day. I think also, uh, give me two Tyree Kill touchdowns. I think they want to make a statement this weekend. Uh, expect Tyree Kill to have a big day as well. Um, so if you believe me or if you think I'm an idiot, you can do all that over at FanDuel dot com all right uh before we get to the offense for the barracuda and uh why it's i think it's built to be sustainable do you want to of course thank you guys for making locked on sharks your first listen probably part of the locked on network we cover your team every day for your second listen go check out one of the other great shows of course uh you have locked on fantasy ho- hockey so if your fantasy team is in shambles and you need some help they've got you covered there uh or check out one of the great shows here in the bay area of course you have locked on 49ers uh Brutal news with the Ayuk. Um, so they've got you covered from all angles with that. Got locked on Warriors with basketball season starting this week. Locked on J- uh, A's and locked on Giants. Uh, so make sure you go check out one of those episodes wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. All right, the offense. And the big reason why I think this bear could have won having NASCAR, but two, I think the offense is just set up for better success this year because um, you have so much diversity on where you can get goals from. And they've had a lot of good fortune with the the fourth line uh, providing goals right now for the Barracuda. Um, Anthony Vincent and Donovan Hull uh, both have uh, are at three points or sorry, Donovan Hull is at five points. Uh, Anthony Vincent's at three points and maybe those numbers aren't sustainable, but you look at where they're getting contributions from. They're getting contributions from a lot of different players um, who are providing big numbers. I think you have to start with Phil Bested, who last season showed in his, you know, small sample size last season. They had, he's great in the AHL. The North American hockey fits Phil Bested the way he likes to play hockey, like a glove. And he's come in this season, um, and he's picked up right where he's left off. And to be honest, Beast has actually left some meat on the bone. He's had a lot of – he's he's had at least three goals that I can think of um, where he probably should have scored there but didn't. Of course, there was the one um, last week against the Rain where him and I I believe it was Cardwell. It was either Cardwell or Robbins. um, Two-on-one. And B said he misses the net and it goes under the goalies pads and kind of skitters out last uh, last game. He had a post and a crossbar, but I love the way B says playing. I don't love the way that he is um, finding his teammates, uh, especially in the offensive zone. Um, the way his, his passing looks crisp. It looks like he's got a plan. Um, he knows exactly what he's doing with the puck. Like there's not a lot of, you know, kind of second guessing himself just the confidence that he is playing with right now um, you love to see. And that's why he is leading the team in points right now with five points, him and Donovan Hull are leaving the team in points right now. Uh, Two goals, three assists each in four games. Um, And, you know, I think Bisa is going to be there all season. He's on the William Eklund plan of, maybe get some NHL games at the end of the season, but they want him to really round out his game. That way comes next summer, next off season, be said can just make the sharks, right? Like none of this bouncing around. 
He's on the William Eklund plan, and he is doing really great right now on the William Eklund plan. Um, you look at where they're getting contributions from, right? It's it's guys uh, like Colin Graff has had a great start with two four points in four games. Um, you know, Tristan Robbins, who I know he's dealing with a little bit of injury. I wrote about it last weekend, uh, but he's dealing like he just has his jump back in this game. Uh, he had three three points in two games. Um, and the crazy, like Andrew Podorowski, who like was one of their big free agents, he's had three points in, or three assists in four games. Like we haven't really seen like the Podorowski game. Like Podorowski is like a point per game type of player. Haven't even seen his first goal yet. Um, Scott Sabrin, you know exactly what you're getting from Scott Sabrin. He's going to be super annoying to play against, but he's going to provide offense there. And then the young guys that are providing offense, right? Uh, of course, Luca Canioni with four points in four games here, got his first uh, two goals over the weekend. Um, so I'm, yeah, like he is, Luca Canyon, he's good. We'll talk more about the defense here in a little bit, but, um, you know, you're getting uh, Casper Halton in, who's got three points in four games. And uh, with Halton in, like, I think there's a, a ton of room for growth, right? If you kind of look back last year at London, um, a little bit of a slow start for him, and he was very much used as a power play specialist um, on the third line. Scored a bunch of his goals on the power play, but then as the season went on, gained some more trust, and in the playoffs was an absolute beast. Began the season with the Barracuda, playing on the third line, power play specialist. You know, you see the physicality there. Um, most of his points have been scored on the power play, but I expect him to continue to grow and progress. So if it, things are a little quiet right now, I'm not worried uh, because I think his game will continue to grow and progress as, and develop as he gets more uh, accustomed to playing professional hockey in North America. Nice thing is he's already played professional hockey over in Finland uh, before he went to the OHL. Or, so I think his his game will translate pretty quickly here um and then you know the 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 kind of sneaky thing about it is barracuda can get a ton of reinforcements here right um you're going to get one if not both daniel gushin and thomas bordolo at some point right um i know bordolo is still not practicing and stuff but when both those guys are healthy, you're probably the Sharks are probably going to have to make a decision and you're going to get one of those guys back. And they might even get some more help if the Sharks wave a guy like Giovanni Smith or Clean Costin or try to kind of sneak one of those guys down to to the Barracuda. Like this team has the ability to score on all four lines. They have AHL star players. They have young players who are stepping up and they have room to grow. So I see this offense being just continuing to be really good because they have so many can, guys who can contribute for them. Um, and again, like there's potential room to grow because of who you might get at some point here because of, you know, just because of the numbers game up with the Barracuda or up with the Sharks. Um, yeah. And then like, and I think to the bottom you know, especially that bottom line of Lucas Van Roboy, Anthony Vincent, Don, uh, Donovan uh, Hull. Those guys know exactly what their job is. They're going to go out there and be super annoying. And they've been scoring goals right now, too, which is uh, even better, right? It's they're going to be an annoying pesky line. And then you're also scoring. It's just it's, it's exactly what you want. Uh, but I think the combination of veterans like Parolsky, Justin Bailey, like his speed and his forechecking and just his size uh, mixed with the young players, I think it's a perfect combination on this offense for them to continue to score and score a bunch of goals. Maybe not seven goals a game like we saw this weekend, but I don't see why this team can't be putting up four goals a night because of who they can – who they could be getting production from at any given point. So uh, we'll talk about the defense and improvement on the defense here uh, and more on Luca Canyoni, of course. Uh, so we'll get to that here in just one second. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't a search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. 
And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. So join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, let's finish up by looking at just the improvements on the defense here. And I think it really has to start with the personnel, right? And I, th- the big one, the big player, Jimmy Schultz, signing him really just solidifies what this defense is going to be because he is a legitimate, like top end AHL caliber defenseman. And you've seen everything just kind of trickles down from there. Um, Jake Furlong, immediate, immediate impact. Um, Pairing those two together, that's a perfect partner for Furlong to learn from. Is Schultz because I think their games are very similar. Um, Schultz, you know, like for sorry for Furlong, he's had in him like I'm surprised and happy to see just the immediate impact that he's had. He's been used as like in every situation on the penalty kill, like top pairing penalty kill minutes. Um, he has hit the ground running, and you saw like watching his game in the queue where he was very much offensively focused. Um, kind of the first couple seasons, but that last season before he got injured, the production was down, but you saw improvements in his defensive game. Um, you saw a, more physicality. You saw kind of toughness. You saw him playing against the best teams, uh, you know, top players. Like he was used in that situation with Halifax there and you're seeing it already kind of um, come to fruition and, and seeing those that play out for him. Um, but I, I love that pairing right there. And then you look at Luca Cagnoni and his impact. And like he's had some up and down moments. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love Luca Cagnoni. Like, he is, I I've, I think he's going to be like an impact player for the Sharks. I think he's a steal in the fourth round. But he's had some of his, like, with a guy like that, right? You're going to have moments where um, things go really, really well. And then you're going to have moments where you try to do a little bit too much. Um, not saying like Ryan Merkley esque, but right. Any of those kind of really offensive driven defensemen, you're going to have those moments where you just try to do a little bit too much uh, and you don't get away with it. And he's had some of those moments, but the thing I love about Luca is one, he can actually play defense, um, especially transition defense, an absolute stud on the transition. And you saw it this weekend, um, two on two scenario. He's got his man and he just ends up with the puck. And it's crazy how often in those like kind of one-on-one scenarios where he just ends up with the puck, he, bigger, faster guys. He just ends up with the puck because of uh, the way he leverages himself, his how smart he is, just the way he kind of attacks the game. Um, but you've seen the immediate impact for the Barracuda and the way he plays and what he provides. Um, and, I, and he's, he's just going to get better. Like he's just going to get better. Um, So I know there's already people claim clamoring for him to be called up. Like let's, let's pump the brakes. I want Luca to just to, when I, when Luca gets called up, I want Luca to get called up and that is it. Like I want him to uh, be called up to the sharks. One, get a better number than 42. Uh, But two, like just that's it. So I'm fine with him staying down here, especially on this Barracuda team, which is really good. And he's an important, important piece to this Barracuda team. Um, but, you know, you're looking at guys, you know, Valtteri Pulley's played pretty solidly on, you know, kind of on that bottom pair. Ethan Frisch, who's had, um, you know, a nice kind of like, he's really, I think, had a big, big off season and really stepped up. Joey Keane, who they signed like this off season, like they have just more dudes who can play defense right now and then also provide some offense. And then they also have Lucas Carlson, who is still like injured another top AHL. They just have another top AHL defenseman just waiting in the wings for whenever he gets healthy. 
And again, kind of going back to the reinforcements of it all, you might be getting some more reinforcements when the Sharks, if the Sharks with Mukuma Dolan and uh, Vlasic, who neither one of them are expected to be on this road trip, but um, they're going to have to make some moves here at some point to bring some of these guys back. Um, and it seems very, you know, talking to Nick Nolenberger before the season, it seems very much like they want to give Muka Madulin a chance uh, to play NHL games and establish himself as an NHL player. So if you get Jack Thompson back, who NHL All-Star himself last year, if you wave a guy like a Matt Benning or whomever, and those guy, one of those guys comes down to the AHL, you're getting another just veteran guy uh, who's played a bunch of NHL games and to kind of come in and help solidify your blue line. So um, I, th- I just think this, this team is they're rolling right now. They're playing well. They have, they're getting contributions from a bunch of different guys and they have room for improvement. And, you know, even if when the sharks start to sell pieces off and they have to kind of pull from the Barracuda, I just think they're just a more well-rounded team and they're going to be able to kind of withstand some of those. Um, and then, when the shark season's over and all they get all those guys back, potentially all these guys back for a playoff run. Um, yeah, you could see you could see this team making a bit of a run here. And I know we are four games into the season, and there's a lot that could happen. Um, you know, one of the goal the sharks goalies could blow his knee out and Ascroft has to play the entire season in the NHL. Like there, there's a lot of different things that could happen, but you feel like this 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 year's we've been kind of waiting for this team to to start to do something and i feel like this is the year for the barracuda i feel like they they've surrounded this team with a lot of veteran players um you have young players who are contributing right now and look have room to continue to grow and improve um and i, I just think this barracuda team's going to be fun so um Pay attention to the Barracuda this year. If you get a chance to go one of the Barracuda games, absolute blast. You should definitely do it. Um, but yeah, the, this this Barracuda team is is going to be very good. They have all the ingredients that they need uh, to be a very, very good team. So uh, that's going to be it for me today. We'll be back tomorrow as the Sharks are back on the road because, you know, uh, schedules are fun. So yeah. Um, Sharks versus Ducks on Tuesday. So we got you guys covered for that. See if the Sharks can finally get off the schneid here and get their first win. Uh, so make sure you're following wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Uh, follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. Follow me on Twitter at My Fry Hole. Till tomorrow. Bye, friends.